Oh, thank there you. We go. You're welcome. Um, so guys, what makes the perfect monster? Like, what ingredients do you have to have to have the perfect Doctor Who monster? I think that's almost indefinable. If if they work, then they they work, and if they don't, they don't. Why is the sea devil more, you know, well known and better received than the Silurian? You know, why don't, why do we like um, you know big monster A, whereas the Garn not necessarily <laughs> quite well <laughs> well received? Um, you know, it's lightning in a bottle to get it right. I think. And, and if I knew what the perfect solution to that was, we'd get it right. I think sometimes it's silhouette. I think if you get the silhouette right, certainly that's how I feel about the Daleks. I think the, the, the ones we did, we spent a lot of time making sure that the silhouette matched what Ray Cusick had done in 63. And I think one of the reasons that the, the new Paradigm Daleks aren't as well received is that the silhouette got much around with too much, so stray too far from what was there before, and it's not the same monster. And are the Silurians that are in modern Doctor Who remotely like the Silurians from the original series? No. Therefore, was it easier to just go, these are a different monster? But that's decisions made at a much higher level. Um, I, for me, I reckon it was what I was kind of alluding to earlier, which is, it, it's everything working together so it's a great story it's a it's a, it's all the other things because there have been some terrific monsters that have for whatever reason look fairly lousy and there's been some fairly average ones that have been terrific because all the other stuff's working working around it and um uh, and i think the big challenge is something that that uh, it looks good and keeps looking good. We um, we're lucky we get a, a fair bit of, you know, love for the destroyer. But I think half the reason that works is because he's not really on for very long. He kind of comes on, he's only in a few scenes, and he works all right in those scenes, and then he goes. And it, it, I, who, who knows if it had been in all three episodes, there would have inevitably been moments where it just doesn't look as good or work as well. So, for me, it's everything coming together rather than just the... And also whoever's playing it. If, if again, with this destroyer, the, the, the guy playing him is very, very young and quite fit. And so he, like a lot of monsters, they kind of lumber about because everything's so heavy and you can't really move in them. But, but somebody young, he kind of moved around as if it wasn't any effort and, and it feels better for that. So if all of those things working together, and I think that's, that's where it starts to work. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a whole load of factors involved. Certainly the performer is a big part of that. And definitely the way it's filmed. If you think of like the alien in the first alien film, you you hardly see it, you're seeing strategic little bits of it, and so it's never fully revealed until right at the end. Um, same with, say, the Famasi in Leisure Hive, not that that's a great comparison to Geiger's Alien necessarily, <laughs> but if you look at the earlier episodes, you're seeing a bit of an eye, a bit of a tail, a bit of a claw, and it's much more effective than when you get the full reveal of the beanbag. Um, <laughs> So a lot is the way it's shot, the way it's lit. As Mike was saying with the Merca, it, it was in bright lighting. It's never going to work. If it had been maybe in a dark tunnel scene with a load of smoke, strategically shot, maybe they'd have got away with it. Um, so a lot of different factors. We're just going to mention again Kevin Lindsay um, in the Sontaran stuff. The fact that he does all this, this business where he sticks his tongue out through the mask and sort of licks the edge of the latex made you think, God, this is, this is a revolting creature, not a bloke in a mask. So, so there's something about going that extra mile with the performance that makes a huge difference. I think with uh, the first two sometimes, which is Kevin Lindsay, his voice as well is very good. I mean, Dan Stock, he's, you know, he gives a performance, I'm just his voice is more... I don't know, I just find it's that hissing sort of, I don't know, it's just particularly effective. Anyway. 